This is a video on how to install a trailer wiring harness on your 2016 and up Chevy Spark. Specifically uh, the T1 that is sold on eTrailer.com. Just going through the pictures here to show you uh, what that kit comes with. I'll leave a link in the description below if you're interested in that. So first step of the process, you've got these three pins on the back here that hold this uh, rear piece of plastic on the uh, cargo area here. And you're just going to pull those three pins out and then after you have those three pins out it's just clipped in and it'll pry right out of there. Um, make sure you have your plastic trim removal tools so you don't scratch up the plastic too bad. And once you have that center panel removed, you're going to move to the sides. And there's one little plastic pin uh, at the bottom there on each side. And there's one screw up at the top. So I didn't realize that yet. I started prying this away. But then I realized there's a little door up here. You just pop that open. And there's a little Phillips head screw inside. So you undo that. Now you can pry the rest of it away and what I found best to do was to just unclip this gray piece here uh, that the seatbelt goes through and just slide that down and then you just pull the rest of it. You don't have to completely remove the panel, uh, you just have to be able to get in there uh, to get to the wiring. So this should be all I really need because I just need to get to that plug right there and run the wires down on here. So let me get this side off. One nice thing about the Spark 2, uh, I was able to take all this apart without breaking anything. Um, all of the clips uh, are metal, so there's a good chance that you're not going to break anything when you're taking this stuff apart if, you're, if this is something you're wondering if you can do yourself. So now you have access to these uh, wiring harnesses here, these little connectors. And these connectors are what your T connector is going to splice into. One end is male, one end is female, and you're just going to go in between uh, the two. And then those wires go to a powered control box, which we're going to run a wire to the battery to power. But this part is easy, and it's nice because you don't have to splice any wires. You just keep the factory connectors there, so you could always undo it if you needed to. Um, and that stuff I'm putting on the connectors there is just a little bit of dielectric grease to keep it from corroding. Something that the instructions recommended doing. Um, next, you need to get your uh, ground screw uh, screwed in, or your ground wire secured. Um, there's a nice little spot here at the back. Really, you can put this anywhere you want. Um, the kit comes with a self-tapping screw, so it'll just screw right into the metal. You don't have to drill a hole first. I drilled a hole with the screw and then just went ahead and screwed the wire down. And now your module is grounded. Next, you're going to take that control module and it comes with a little piece of two-sided tape and I found the best place to put it was just on the back side of the driver's side wheel well it seemed to fit in there good and you're able to put that plastic panel back um, without it interfering this black wire right here which is going to go to this main control box uh, which goes directly to the positive terminal on the battery so you got to figure out how to get this wire to the front of the car. So in the instructions it says to find a grommet and run it underneath with the other wiring. In this car the wiring runs inside the uh, 
the plastic trim in the doors here. So like it runs, you can see that loom there. So it runs down inside here and all the way to the front. And I didn't want to have to take all that plastic off. So ran the wire out of the back grommet here for the taillights. As you can see, there's plenty of extra room in here. And that's going to go down in between the bumper or the bumper cover and the uh, rear of the car. So that brings the wire into this wheel well. So I ran it up into the frame here. I don't know if you can see it there. Up into the frame, back out of the frame, because where this strut tower is, I couldn't get past that. So once the wheel's down, this sleeve is gonna protect that wire also zip tied it there and there back into the frame underneath you can see it's back out of the frame and then I tied it to the ABS wiring Let's see here so hopefully you can see it there strapped up to the ABS then I went around the gas tank trying to avoid the exhaust. Strapped it up again here. This is the emergency brake cable. Then back into the frame and was able to run it through that frame all the way up to the front in the engine compartment. So just kind of from underneath the car was able to push it up and this is just where it came out you know you could route it back further if you wanted but for me I think that's gonna work okay so you're gonna disconnect the negative terminal first so once you have that negative terminal disconnected now you're just gonna add your fuse link here which takes a uh, 10 amp fuse. Uh, it comes with the fuse, the kit comes with the fuse and all the connectors that you need to do this. Um, you just need to have your crimpers and your wire strippers. I always like to give those connectors a little tug just to make sure that they're secured on there. And here I'm just kind of laying it out, trying to figure out how much of that uh, excess wire I need to trim off. I always like to put a little extra uh, electrical tape on here, especially going to be under the engine compartment where it might get wet and that'll just protect it from corrosion a little bit. I did have one issue here uh, with using this uh, part of the terminal. I uh, wasn't able to fully close this uh, the red cap there once this is back on. So if that's something you're worried about, you might want to consider doing something a little bit differently, but it was not a big concern for me, so I just left it that way. All right, so now you're just gonna just have to splice that connection in the rear. I'm using a connector with a heat shrink on the ends of it here, uh, only because I screwed up with the connector that came with the kit. So it doesn't come with any extra connectors, so it's just a reminder that uh, it's probably a good idea to have a few extras uh, on hand. Alright, so now it's time to test the trailer wiring, and I actually have the little trailer I'm going to plug in and test, so... 
think this would be a problem. And you definitely want to test it before you put everything back together, just in case there's an issue you don't want to find out and have to take all that stuff apart again. Appears to be working. And as you can see, it is working. Slightly delayed, but that's all right. Now I'm just trying it with the headlights only. Backside markers are on. Are they on? Yeah, it's on. Sweet. Okay, now it's just time to put everything back together. The only real trick to putting this stuff back together is that the weather stripping on the outside there, it's a little bit difficult to get tucked in. You're going to have to use your plastic trim removal tools again just to get that inside uh, that weather stripping. Get that plastic trim inside that weather stripping. And that's all there is to it. Just repeat the same steps on this side. Alright, last step here, just get this piece back. Now this was a little tricky. Um, you have to start it uh, underneath the weather stripping there. And then I had to put almost all my weight on it to push it down and get it to snap into place. And one thing I didn't mention about these clips, these little pins in the back, is you have a, a center piece and an outside piece. So although there's three pins, there's actually six pieces that you have to uh, push in there. An outer piece and then an inner piece that locks it in place. And last step here, just putting the tail light back in, finishing it up. And just show you here what it looks like once it's complete. You can hide the wiring inside the trunk area here. And it fits right down in between the spare tire there. And you just Pull it outside of the trunk, close it, and you're good to go. I want to thank you for watching, and if this helped you out, please consider uh, liking, sharing, and subscribing. Thank you.